Good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, very pleased to be in front of you. I'm here with my wife, uh, Anne, class of 72, St. Mary's. And um, I serve as the Midwest director, uh, which is Michigan and Indiana. Welcome to my district. Um, and as a member of the international, uh, I'm sorry, the Internal Activities Committee, I have the honor and privilege of introducing this year's recipient of the Reverend John J. Kavanaugh CSC Award. This is conferred on Notre Dame graduates for performance of outstanding service in the field of government, patriotism, public service, local, state, and national politics. This year's honoree is John Gallo, Notre Dame class of 1983. John is also a 1986 graduate of Harvard Law School. After he served a one-year federal um, clerkship in the Northern District of Illinois, John joined the U.S. Attorney General's Office in 1989 in their criminal division, where he worked on many numerous high-profile cases. In 1996, John joined the prestigious law firm of Sydney and Austin as a litigation partner. John eventually became the chair of Sydney's litigation group in Chicago and the co-chair of Sydney's Global White Collar Defense Group. He also headed Sydney's Capital Litigation Project, which, it, which defended death row inmates while at Sydney. John was also actively engaged in leadership roles for numerous other organizations, including serving as the chair of the Board of Horizons for Youth, a not-for-profit organization focused on education and mentoring for other resource children, for under-resourced children in Chicago. John also managed to both initiate and teach a course in federal criminal practice for 15 years as an adjunct professor at our Notre Dame Law School while still working for Sydney. In 2017, John retired from Sydney and became the CEO Executive Director of the Legal Assistance Foundation of Chicago, referred to as LAF, Chicago's largest legal aid organization. LAF handles such matters as tenant evictions, violence in the home, bankruptcy, juvenile criminal record expungement, and the tracking down and prosecution of criminals that target undocumented and other vulnerable victims. At LAF, John heads a staff of 88 attorneys and 40 paralegals and has significant responsibilities for fundraising for this 501c3 organization. On a personal note, some years ago, John took a young girl named Jean to their prom at St. Benedict's High School in Chicago. They later married and they have four grown children, two of whom graduated from Notre Dame. Jean is with John today, along with three of their children and a table full of significant others and a very small significant one who I just heard make a small little <laughs> noise. Please join me in welcoming this year's Kavanaugh Award honoree, John Gallo. Thank you, everyone, and thanks for that very nice uh, introduction, Mark. Uh, it is impossible for me to express adequately the significance of this day to me. <clears throat> to receive a public service award from an institution so close to my heart in the presence 
of those closest to me is a beautiful once-in-a-lifetime gift. Thank you to my dear lifelong friend Pat Doyle for nominating me, to the Alumni Association for choosing me, and to my family for coming today to be with me on this special day. As I endeavored to frame my remarks for today on this beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous day, thank you, God, for this, <laughs> two adjectives came to mind, poignant and paradoxical. Poignant, because it was unquestionably on this campus that I first developed a perspective that knits closely together my faith with social justice. I majored in the program of liberal studies, a liberal arts education that focused on studying history's great books, discussing their meaning in small seminars led by academic stalwarts, and writing about the book's significance. By graduation, I had established my North Star, one clearly, repeatedly, and unequivocally declared by Jesus, serving the poor those with the least among us. I learned that the measure for Jesus is this. Do we welcome and care for the vulnerable, the stranger, the forgotten, the childlike? This for me is poignant, coming back here to the place that I credit for putting me on a path to receive this recognition today. I'm grateful and blessed. My path toward my North Star since has been a bit of a circuitous route. I was a federal prosecutor for seven years, a partner at a large law firm for 21. Yes, in 2017, I became a legal aid lawyer in Chicago. And the, and the organization has a new name, so you know it's called Legal Aid Chicago. Now, it used to be LAF. So I became a legal aid lawyer in Chicago in 2017, but by that time, my wife and I had paid off our house, our four children's college educations, and before I signed up for this new professional life, our financial advisor and dear friend advised us that he could be confident that we would have a comfortable, secure financial future. Which brings me to a second adjective that came to mind as I was preparing my remarks for today. Paradoxical. I have over 200 colleagues at Legal Aid Chicago, the largest provider of civil legal aid in the Midwest. And virtually all of them have dedicated their entire careers to serving the indigent among us. These colleagues graduated from law schools that were as fine as mine with school debt and then raised families while earning a fraction of what they otherwise could. And they have done so every day, returning home, managing the effects of the secondary trauma they develop, saving clients in crisis. It's paradoxical that I parachute in to lead these everyday heroes, and then I receive this fantastic award. Parachute in hand, the least I can do today is tell you about why the lifelong work of my colleagues is so critical. All of us here have read about rapid rise in income inequality in this country. That income inequality has deprived low-income families of a fair share of our society's income growth. But it has also affected these families in a more specific way. It has stacked the legal system heavily against them. Let me explain. Our court system was designed on the implicit premise that all litigants will be represented by attorneys. That system was created by lawyers, for lawyers, and on the assumption that everyone has a lawyer. But the reality is far from that. The National Center for State Courts estimates that in almost 75% of civil cases in this country, more than one or both of the parties are not represented by a lawyer. According to another survey, 
More than 70 percent of low-income American households have been involved in an active civil dispute of some significance during the preceding year. And in more of 80 percent of those cases, those low-income Americans did not have effective legal representation. The stakes in these cases for these low-income neighbors is enormous. They can lose their home, their livelihood, or their children without having legal help. Statistically, one of these low-income Americans has an attorney. Oh, I'm sorry. Statistically, whether one of these low-income Americans has an attorney or not is a huge predictor of how they will fare in court. Default judgments, which means the court enters an order because nobody appears, default judgments are the most common way that cases are disposed of in civil courts across this country. And it's low-income people who are affected most by that. Notably, many of these unrepresented low-income citizens do not realize they have rights that they can assert and that the courts are the best place for them to address their problems. And my granddaughter is crying as I am about this, about this situation. Remarkably, the World Justice Project ranks the United States dead last, 36 out of 36 among high-income countries on the question of whether people can access and afford civil justice. So a few words about the people that we represent. All of our clients are living in poverty, but that expression does not capture the everyday constant state of crisis that they live in. These are people who are at best living on the edge. They exist moment from to moment, from day to day, from paycheck to paycheck. There's no room for a mistake, for a misstep, for a misjudgment. There's no bank account no parent or child to turn to for financial support. They come to us in a desperate need at a pivotal point in their lives, whether because they had bought an inoperable car from a deceptive dealer, they'd become financially dependent upon an abuser, they withheld rent on their subsidized housing because their plumbing didn't work, or escaped from being enslaved by a sex trafficker they come to us on the verge of a downward spiral. But the good news for the clients who come to us is that they invariably, that invariably my colleagues identify a right that these clients have for which there is a remedy. They have a right. They have a right to a remedy. They just don't know it. Consider, for example, the statistics with regard to tenants facing eviction in Cook County, Illinois, which is Chicago, where we practice. If a tenant there is unrepresented, she has less than a 5% chance of returning to her home after being served with an eviction notice. But if a tenant is represented by lawyers from Legal Aid Chicago, my colleagues, she returns to her home more than 90% of the time. The statistics for our other practice groups are comparable. And here's the very good news. The clients that our colleagues serve and save do not fall off the edge. They stay in their home. They're protected from their abuser. They're given relief from debt collectors. But at Legal Aid Chicago, we see something even better than all that. And it's supported by studies on three continents. Experiments aimed at enhancing the self-worth of poor people suggest Work like ours has the potential to empower and break the cycle of poverty. While poverty can induce hopelessness, setting off a cycle, a vicious cycle, the research that I referred to shows modest interventions that instill a sense of hope sometimes lead to the most remarkable improvements. And our experiences at Legal Aid Chicago support that proposition. Those clients whose housing we've stabilized continue to live in subsidized housing years later. Those women for whom we obtained orders protecting them from abusers years later are employed and living in stable environments. 
The simple act of providing a lawyer is the kind of modest intervention that is empowering and enhances the chances that low-income neighbors, our low-income neighbors, can move away from life's edges and lead stable, happy lives. Finally, I believe the work being done by my colleagues at Legal Aid Chicago is the kind of work that has the potential to heal the divisiveness that plagues our society. There is a difference between curing and healing. And like the church, our church, my colleagues are called to the slow and difficult work of healing. They are called every day to enter into relationship as the church does, as the church calls all of us to do, to enter into relationship, to enter into another's pain. <sighs> to anoint that pain as holy and to stick around no matter the outcome. In this regard, our country's many faith traditions are united about this deep truth that we are one with each, we are I appreciate, I appreciate that interruption because that gave me a little mojo back, okay. So, <laughs> so our country's faith traditions are united on this deep truth that we are one with each other and that everything falls apart whenever mercy is displaced by anything less or anything else. I recently learned from a Jewish colleague about the concept of tikkun olam which means to repair or heal the world. This Jewish concept is that every action, no matter how small, that we take to do good repairs the entire world. From the time I heard of Tikkun Olam, I knew it to be true. My colleagues frequently succeed in their efforts to provide legal assistance to indigent clients. But even when they do not, their efforts, efforts are still worthwhile. In every case, they stood in court with their client at a time of crisis and ensured their position was heard. And by doing so, my colleagues dignified our client, and by doing that, helped heal the world. Just over 42 years ago, in August 1979, my parents dropped me off at Morrissey Hall. And unbeknownst to me, she began. Our Lady of the Lake began slowly, gently, yet relentlessly pressing her seal upon my heart. She's never stopped. I know the same is true for all of you here. United by her seal, let's remain united in her cause to serve those most in need among us, and confident that by doing so, we will heal the world. Thank you very much.
John, thank you for your inspiring words. Uh, thank you mostly for your example of service. Um, it lifts us all, so we are, we're so proud to be here with you and to recognize you today. Um, I'd like to call forth uh, Mariana Diaz to offer Mariana here our, uh, our benediction. We'll do the, I'm sorry, we'll do the awards first. I apologize. Dolly, you come forward for a, a photograph of the award. Now I'd like to ask uh, Mariana Diaz, uh, class of 08 and 14, to offer our benediction. We pray to the Lord. Dear Father, we give you thanks for this meal and for bringing us together today. Thank you for John's presence and for sending us through him such a beautiful message of awareness and faith. We thank you for this opportunity to serve the university, alumni, and students. We thank the university and the staff who have welcomed us with open arms. We pray for those offering today, and we ask for your blessing as we continue with our meetings. Please grant us wisdom and inspiration that all of our thoughts and actions reflect your will. May we accompany one another in our learning as we grow today and we apply everything that we learn in the future. May your love and grace continue to guide us today and in the future as well. We pray in your name, amen. I, I would be remiss if I didn't say just um, one thing and that is uh, John, G, and the entire Gallo family, thank you. Um, I, if I had known, I would have brought my backup makeup. I may need it this afternoon. Um, thanks for being a true Notre Dame man. Thanks for giving back. Thanks for holding everything about this place dear. And thanks for making all of our alumni proud. Thank you.